Hello, this is Robert Dick. This is the first video example from my article for Leonardo magazine, uh, Acoustics, Real Time, Real Life, Why the Flute and Flutist Needed to Evolve. Now, what we have here is a very standard BAM flute with um, open holes. Now, by that I mean the five keys here, 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 there, and there. I hope I pointed correctly. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> and um, they have perforations in them, and those are referred to as the open hole keys. Um, the flute goes to a low B foot joint. That's the B directly half a step below middle C on the piano. Um, virtually every flutist is playing on something something just like this. Um, the variations that one might find are um, for students and in some, some um, countries around the world one would find plateau keys, meaning there are no open holes, and the C foot. But um, from the standpoint of composing music today, the closed hole C foot flute may be considered as a period instrument whose period has passed. Um, this is the instrument of the present, and um, as the article goes along, um, we'll be looking at instruments of the future. Now, um, one of the reasons why some very simple acoustic understanding was delayed uh, was simply because, well, there are 16 keys and, uh, well, 16 holes rather, played by nine fingers. And um, therefore, various fingers have got to do multiple jobs. Um, and often, one finds oneself moving downwards when the sound is moving upwards. So, uh, some simple examples F natural to F sharp. Okay, what that looks like is there's F and there is F sharp. Um, second octave the same. Third octave also the same. Um, as we go over the octave break, from an almost open flute, the trill holes are still closed, but everything else is open for C sharp, and to go to D, we're fingering downwards, and um, an octave higher, there we're going to a D, which is not a product of overblowing a D natural fundamental, but it's overblowing a G fundamental, a twelfth lower. And that's clarified by opening this little vent key. Now, when we get into the third octave of the flute, it gets pretty Byzantine. D to E flat. And um, so what I'm going to do now is... Um, put the flute in this kind of awkward position so that you can see the uh, fingers and keys clearly. And I'm going to play a third octave chromatic scale. And um, you can see just from the standpoint of kinesthetics as relating to a very simple chromatic scale, just how bizarre it actually is. to play the flute struggles over this in, in their early going and eventually learns it and memorizes it and makes it intuitive and um, we accept it because, well, that's the way it is. Um, but on closer examination, um, the real questions come up in that 
could there be a kinesthetic identity between how the sound moves and how the fingers move. That's the way string instruments are, and that's why I think what's happening on a string instrument is so much clearer with this identity between what you see and what you hear um, than on wind instruments.